Like a tinderbox in a dry forest, the Middle East stands on the brink of a wider conflagration as Israel continues its military operations in the Gaza Strip and considers a new offensive in southern Lebanon. The potential for a larger conflict involving multiple battlefronts is causing increasing concern across the region. The conflict with the Palestinian Hamas movement, which erupted with an unprecedented surprise attack last October, has led to Israel being struck from several directions. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu described a seven-front war involving Iran and an informal coalition known as the Axis of Resistance. In time of war, I do not intend to refer to commissions of inquiry. I have already said that this is not the time for that, but I will tell you one thing. The decisions I made regarding the cruise ships and submarines were and remain vital to securing Israel's security against Iran's axis of evil, some of which have already proved useful in the current war. The ships we bought intercepted suicide drone attacks on the state of Israel in the current war. They saved many lives. What would have happened if I had not made the decision to bring these ships? In response to Netanyahu's remarks, Iran's mission to the United Nations issued a stark warning against any large-scale Israeli aggression in Lebanon, home to the powerful Hezbollah movement. The Iranian statement cautioned that such actions would lead to an obliterating war and potentially involve all resistance fronts. The Israeli military has countered by stating it is prepared for various security scenarios to protect the nation. With no ceasefire in sight in Gaza or along the Israel-Lebanon border, here's a detailed overview of the seven fronts where Israel has encountered conflict and where tensions could further escalate. Since Hamas took control of Gaza in 2007, two years after the Israel Defense Forces, IDF, disengaged from the territory, Israel and the militant group have engaged in several conflicts. The recent attack by Hamas on October 7, 2023, has triggered the longest and deadliest conflict to date in the densely populated coastal enclave. Israeli officials have claimed significant gains in the conflict, but acknowledge that achieving their goals, defeating Hamas as a functioning military and political entity, ensuring Gaza does not pose a future threat, and returning hostages could take months. Despite the intense IDF offensive, Hamas continues to conduct near-daily operations, often in coordination with smaller factions. The Fatah-led Palestinian National Authority PA, retains nominal control over parts of the West Bank, but President Mahmoud Abbas faces a major legitimacy crisis. Popular resentment over the lack of elections, accusations of corruption, and growing Israeli military and settler activity have eroded the PA's authority. The IDF regularly conducts raids against suspected militia strongholds such as the Jenin refugee camp and Hamas, along with other factions, including independent groups, has expanded its influence in the West Bank, including the disputed holy city of Jerusalem. Our forces are operating in Rafah, in Shijaya, everywhere in the Gaza Strip. Every day they eliminate dozens of terrorists. It is a difficult struggle that is waged above ground, sometimes in face-to-face -face battles, and it is also waged underground. Weapons smuggling into Gaza has long been a concern for Israel, but the current war has drawn attention to the vast number of arms spread throughout the West Bank. While Israel exerts effective control over much of the territory, a concerted offensive by groups here could divert Israeli security resources from other fronts. I returned yesterday from a tour of the Gaza division. I saw great achievements of fighting that is being carried out in Rafah. We are nearing to the end of the elimination phase of Hamas's terrorist army. There will be a continuation of hitting its remnants.
Israel has already doubled down on resources allocated to the Northern Front due to intensifying clashes with Hezbollah. The militant group recently declared it is ready for anything. Israel has invaded Lebanon three times and fought two major wars involving Hezbollah. But a new all-out conflict could be the most devastating yet for both sides. Israeli officials estimate that Hezbollah has accumulated an arsenal of around 200,000 rockets, along with mortars, drones, surface-to-air missiles, anti-tank missiles, and precision-guided munitions. Hezbollah is widely considered more powerful than Hamas, and a battle with the group could see major Israeli cities such as Tel Aviv and Haifa targeted with barrages of weaponry, overwhelming Israeli defense systems like the Iron Dome. Additionally, Israeli troops would face constant fire along both sides of the border. If Israel ignites the war in Lebanon, it will depend on the level of this war. No one knows the repercussions of igniting the war locally, regionally, or even internationally. We cannot delve into the possibilities of war now, because they are numerous and varied. However, if it does break out, all serious and major possibilities are certainly conceivable on a regional level. In the Golan Heights, an area occupied and annexed by Israel without international recognition, Iran has expanded its influence by supporting President Bashar al-Assad in the Syrian civil war. This support includes backing Hezbollah and various other militias. The IDF has conducted hundreds of airstrikes against suspected Iran-linked targets in Syria. Since the outbreak of the war in Gaza, a coalition of Iran-linked groups known as the Imam Hossein Division has operated in both Syria and Lebanon. Occasional launches against Israel have occurred, but an IDF airstrike that killed Iranian military officials in Damascus sparked the first ever direct exchange of attacks between Iran and Israel, exacerbating fears of a broader conflict between the two longtime rivals. Iraqi militias active in Syria have also become increasingly involved since the beginning of the Israel-Hamas war. While Iraq does not directly border Israel, it has been the source of frequent drone and missile attacks claimed by a coalition of factions known as the Islamic Resistance in Iraq. This coalition includes prominent groups such as the Nujaba Movement, Kataib Hezbollah and Ashab al-Kaf. These groups have warned that their attacks, which had paused following US strikes in response to the deaths of three US soldiers at the Jordan-Syria border, could resume and expand if US forces do not withdraw from Iraq. The ongoing strikes against Israel add another layer of complexity to the conflict. Houthi movement, also known as Ansar Allah, has become one of the most disruptive factions in the axis of resistance. Since taking control of the capital, Sana'a, in 2015, the group has launched missiles and drones against Israel and commercial vessels accused of violating a blockade on trade with Israel. The Houthis have faced repeated strikes from the US and the UK due to their maritime offensives, but they have fortified their military infrastructure with underground complexes and vowed to enter into direct war with Israel and the US if necessary. While Iran has stated it does not seek a regional war, its rhetoric has sharpened and it openly supports axis of resistance factions. Iran possesses the largest and most advanced missile arsenal in the Middle East. Iran, the number one global sponsor of terror, has exposed its true face as the de destabilizer of the region and the world. And now, right now, is when the world must stop ignoring Iran's crimes and take action. As Iran's mask has fallen, 
The world's comp complacency must also fall. The mask comes off and the gloves must come on. Madam President, Excellencies, Iran has no intention of engaging in conflict with the U.S. in the region. We demonstrated our commitment to peace by exercising our restraint about involving the U.S. Army in intercepting Iranian drones and missiles bound for military target in the occupied Palestinian territories. This underscores our dedication to de-escalating tension and avoiding the expansion of conflict. However, if the U.S. initiate military operation against Iran, its citizen or its security and interest, Iran will use its inherent right to respond proportionately. An open conflict with Israel could test the resilience of Israel, nearby Arab states, and the US-Iran's language has become more aggressive, especially as the possibility of an Israel-Hezbollah war looms larger. The axis of resistance includes Shiite fighters from across the Middle East and beyond, including Afghan and Pakistani units. Both the Taliban-led Afghanistan and neighboring Pakistan have issued warnings against Israel over its offensive in Gaza, but have shown no willingness to become directly involved in the conflict. These countries have their own complex histories with Iran and its allies. Additionally, the coalition has sought to include contingents from other countries such as Jordan and Bahrain both close U.S. partners that have cracked down on domestic activity linked to Iran. Azerbaijan, a close Israeli partner that also borders Iran, has also contended with pro-Iran elements at home. Complicating the regional landscape further is the growing partnership between Iran and Russia. Russia has used Iranian drones in its ongoing war in Ukraine and has traditionally balanced its relationships with Iran and Israel. However, Moscow has become an increasingly vocal critic of Israel's campaign in Gaza and its airstrikes in Syria, where Russia maintains troops and air defense systems. As threats escalate and violence continues, the region remains on edge, with the potential for a wider conflict looming large. The situation demands careful navigation to avoid turning the tinderbox into a full-blown inferno.